Dream Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with the race that changed Formula One forever. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. And I'll be eating a snack while watching this, so just giving you guys a heads up. Let's jump in. Oh this my is the god! Worst for a free that I have ever seen in the whole of my life. As the great Murray Walker, an icon of the commentary scene, looked on, he found himself at a loss for words for what he'd just seen. I don't think many, if any, races can claim to have provided as much drama in the entire history of Formula oh, 1 as the 1998 Belgian Grand Prix. From a 13-car pile-up, jaw-dropping crashes, a literal pit lane bust-up, to the spicy Schumachers going to war, and a maiden win for Jesus. one of the sport's rising underdogs, this race had everything. Qualifying was something special right from the start. The track conditions on Saturday were cool and dry, just perfect, and a thrilling duel between the two McLarens of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard were taking centre stage. Every time Coulthard would go faster, Hakkinen would respond by shaving off a few more tenths. In the end, though, Hakkinen snatched pole position by a mere one-tenth of a second, securing the front row for McLaren alongside Coulthard. Meanwhile, Damon Hill also had a fantastic qualifying performance, taking P3 ahead of Michael Schumacher and Eddie Irvine in P4 and P5. Schumacher's best time, in fact, was under scrutiny due to a waved yellow flag incident, oh. and in the end, Hill managed to beat him by a fraction of a second. Beyond the top contenders, other drivers had their share of challenges. Jacques oh Villeneuve God. took a very nice sixth place on the grid, despite almost wrecking his Williams the day before. Mika Salo wasn't as fortunate, though. Crashing his oh arrow during God. qualifying. And let's just Did say he? he would face some more trouble during the race. How are you even getting that? How do you fix that car before the race, bro? He destroyed that joke. This day turned out to be quite a roller coaster of events. Despite the forecast predicting warm and dry conditions, it started raining early Saturday morning. And boy, was everyone surprised about that one. I mean, it never rains at Spa, does it? <laughs> what? Rain expert Schumacher showed his skill during the warm-up, setting the pace in his Ferrari, followed by Irvine, Hakkinen, Fisichella, Ralph Schumacher and Hill. The weather, however, was unpredictable, and as the race began, only a few drivers, including Villeneuve, Alesi and most notably Michael Schumacher, opted for intermediate tyres. Others, like Hakkinen, Coulthard, Hill and Irvine, went with full wet tyres to play it safe. And boy, was this race anything but safe. When the I'm excited to see. I love when teams use different strategies on what tires they're going to start out with. Because uh, it's like, who, as, by the end, you see who chose the right strategy. Uh, well, let's keep it rolling. Lights went out, Hakkinen got off to a solid start, but Coulthard struggled to get going. Villeneuve, on the other hand, had shot up to challenge Hakkinen for the lead. Hill, experiencing excessive wheel spin, had dropped back to around 7th from 3rd, oh allowing Michael Schumacher to climb up to P3. The front runners had got away well, for the most part, but it would be behind them where the real chaos unfolded. The spray oh from the cars made God. it nearly impossible to see what exactly happened at the time, but it was believed that Irvine made contact with Coulthard, sending the McLaren spinning across the midfield on the run up to Eau Rouge, oh resulting in a major God. crash into a concrete barrier. It was a horrible sight seeing the car spin across the track like that. That's legit insane, dog. All of these cars. See, that's crazy. And this is on the first lap? Dog. That had to take forever to clear up, dog. Nah, whilst the drivers behind tried to dodge an oncoming murder machine. The likes of Barrichello, Rossett, Panis and Salo would end up being unable to make the restart because their cars were so utterly destroyed. Oh Thankfully God. though, none of the drivers were seriously injured. It took nearly an hour to clear the wreckage and get the spare cars ready for a restart. Irvine took Schumacher's spare car, while Coulthard took the spare McLaren. Jordan's Ralph Schumacher was the only one who managed to escape the initial chaos unharmed, cleverly positioning his car to avoid the mayhem. As the cars lined up for the restart, only 18 drivers lined up on the grid. During the restart, Hill seized the opportunity to redeem himself from his earlier oh. poor start. This time, Hill got it just right and overtook both McLarens as they came around La Source again. While Hill was in dreamland, Hakkinen would have to endure quite the nightmare. Where am I? What was that? 
His McLaren spun 180 degrees as he exited La Source. Oh my! Stationary and oh facing the God. wrong way, he could only watch helplessly as Johnny Herbert Sauber collided with him. Both drivers were out of the race That's on the spot, crazy. prompting the safety car to intervene. At least this time... That as soon as they restarted again another crash, now we are down to 16 cars. And the race wouldn't be halted. Just like there's no halt in the content I'm bringing to you. So if you're enjoying it, make sure you subscribe, will you? To make matters worse for McLaren, Coulthard had a rough first lap, struggling to regain control and ending up in the gravel trap after contact with Alexander Wurtz Benetton. Fortunately, he managed to rejoin the race oh. at the back of the pack. As the safety car led the pack, the top 10 order was Hill, Michael Schumacher, Irvine, Alessi, Villeneuve, Frentzen, Ralph Schumacher, Fisichella, Denise, and Verstappen. There was another Schumacher in there? Hey, was he Michael's brother? All I've ever heard was Michael Schumacher, bro. I ain't never heard of no other Schumachers except for his son, Mick. Was it Mick Schumacher? Except for his son. I never knew there was another Schumacher. And y'all were stopping at 10. But no, not that one. Although with we the know. way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised if he found a way to win this race too. Yeah, After I clearing the God. stranded Sauber and McLaren, the race resumed just two laps later. Hills Jordan, on intermediate tyres with hopes of a drying track, initially looked confident and assured in the changing conditions. He managed to keep a small lead of just over a second on Schumacher's Ferrari for the first few intense laps. However, the rain started getting worse, and it became uh -oh. evident that the Jordan was struggling to cope with the conditions. It was a bizarre sight to see Hill and the Jordan leading the race, but on lap seven, Schumacher made his move. Out breaking Hill into the bus stop chicane God and dang. taking the lead of the race. As the race progressed, Jos Verstappen Stewart suffered a blown engine, forcing dang. him out on lap eight. Irvine also had troubles on lap nine, breaking Ooh. his front wing and bargeboard after missing a chicane and hitting a curb. He made a lengthy pit stop to fix the damage and switch to full wet tires. Ralph Schumacher, on the other hand, would make a strategic tire change on lap 11, swapping Ooh. his intermediates for full wets, which would later prove to be a wise move. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. <laughs> on lap 16, most of the leading drivers still on intermediates, such as the likes of Jacques Villeneuve, would pit for full wets, or at least try to. Yeah, Villeneuve took a happy misadventure into the barriers just before his stop. Are you Damon serious? Hill's pit stop wasn't entirely smooth either, as the mechanics adjusted the front wing settings, but they managed to get it done despite a minor hiccup. By lap 17, Hill found himself sandwiched between the two Schumachers. Michael had a comfortable lead over Hill, and Ralph was in third place, grateful for the wow. earlier strategic tyre change. Alessi, Frentzen, Irvine, Dinis, and Fisichella oh followed God. in top positions. Coulthard, though, was a little frustrated with the conditions and urged for the safety car to return. His intuition would later prove to be correct. Oh. By lap 24, Ralph Schumacher had closed the gap to his teammate Damon Hill to just 10 seconds, while Michael extended his lead over Hill to almost 30 seconds. On this God, very lap, dang. Michael would also almost collide with Denise. And for those of you that know, well, you know how foreshadowing works. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. He then approached Coulthard, who was about to be lapped, but the situation oh. got tense as Schumacher gestured his impatience with the McLaren in his way. His impatience would turn into full-boiled anger on lap 26. Disaster struck as Schumacher's right front wheel hit Coulthard's rear when no. trying to pass the Scotsman. Yeah, David Coulthard in these appalling conditions. Oh, God! Dang, Michael Schumacher! I'd be so heated. Because if you're getting lapped, don't you gotta, like, give way? <clears throat> To the car that's about to lap you and like allow them to lap you like if you losing that bad that i'd be so freaking heated dog so heated i can't believe this and he has such a big lead Maka hits David Coulthard and is out. Causing severe damage to the Ferrari, frustration had gotten the better of the German in these treacherous conditions. Both cars limped on, but Michael's race was over. He'd been leading the race by well over 30 seconds. He was well on his way to solidifying his run at the driver's title, and it was all gone in an instant. Wow. He was so angry that when he got back to the pits, he threw his steering wheel at his mechanic, got out the car and headed straight for the McLaren garage. He confronted to Coulthard, who still had his helmet on. He was totally 
eventually convinced that Coulthard was the one to blame for whatever just went down on the track. And let me tell you, the exchange was fiery. Coulthard later recounted that Schumacher was fuming, accusing him of some pretty serious stuff. We're talking trying to fucking kill me kind of accusations. Things got so intense that the Ferrari and McLaren crews had to step in and physically separate the two hot-headed drivers. Now this was true drama. This is what you'd call in That's cinema terms crazy. pure kino. But the German wasn't done yet. He stormed off to the steward's office to officially lodge a protest against Coulthard. Later, David Coulthard shared his thoughts on Michael Schumacher's antics, saying, It's disgusting behavior for someone who's got such a fantastic record for driving in this sport. He really needs to get some sort of help for controlling his anger after such an event. Yeah, I wasn't kidding when I said the spice was off the charts with this I swear to God, bro, this, this race is crazy. It ain't gonna be nothing but like five cars left at the end of this race. It's gonna be like five cars that finish this race. This is absolutely insane. One. With 19 laps remaining, Damon Hill now found himself back in the lead, except there would be a twist in the tail yet. Despite Michael's accident, there was still hope for a Schumacher victory. Ralph Schumacher, proving that wet weather skills ran in the family, had been climbing through the field and was sitting in third place before his brother's mishap. He had managed to reduce Hill's lead from 22 seconds to just over 10 at one point, and when the safety car was deployed following a crash between Giancarlo Fisichella and God Shinji Nakano, dang. Ralph got a chance to restart the race right behind Hill as the safety car came in with 12 laps to go. Jordan now uh -oh. saw the possibility of not only a victory but also a 1-2 finish, a first in the history of the team, in a season where they hadn't finished higher than fourth. Ah, oh, they probably finna... Oh, I just know. I just... With everything that's gone wrong in this race, somehow, they finna crash into each other and just... The whole, both... <laughs> Both of the guys finna be out of the race, dog. Both of them are about to be. This is finna be insane. Ralph, encouraged by his engineer Sam Michael, quickly found a good rhythm on the restart and piled pressure on Hill. As the race entered its closing stages, with the rain still pouring down, Hill started to feel the pressure and made his status as world champion clear to the team over the radio. Jordan, slow to make a decision, was considering all factors, including Ralph's contract oh. negotiations for the following year. Eventually, he decided to use team orders, instructing Ralph not to overtake Dang. Damon. Ralph's engineer, Sam Michael, tried to get the message through to him several times, and let's just say Ralph wasn't a happy camper about it. No, I bet he wasn't. God, please, no! No! I know he wasn't. Ralph, you cannot overtake Damon, okay? That is team order. Despite the clear instruction, Schumacher continued to push. Damon. Oh, didn't you, Ralph, about overtaking Damon? You heard that, didn't you? Still, there was no response. Nah, hey, Ralph, Ralph, Ralph said he put to go back into the into the garage. He said, I, I never heard anything. I, ne I, I thought we were good. They finna the crash. It was his fourth attempt, but he finally got through to the German driver, who responded with a two word reply. Despite the team orders, there was a sense that Ralph might ignore them, especially since he was suing Jordan to be released from his contract and join Williams next year. Oh. Eddie Irvine's race was over too, as his Ferrari spun off the track into the gravel after clipping a car. Now, both Ferraris were also out. Ralph was That's showing crazy. dedication to the team's orders, but Alacy was applying some pressure from behind albeit unsuccessfully. Frentzen and Denise would end up being unable to keep up with the leading trio, and Jano truly managed to secure a valuable point for Prost, albeit two laps behind the leaders. Slow and steady comes sixth in the race, I suppose. My the race is. concluded on lap 44, with Damon Hill celebrating his historic victory for Jordan, their first ever Grand Prix win and in a remarkable 1-2 finish. Eddie Jordan's joy was evident as he performed a now-famous jig in the paddock. Schumacher's <laughs> first was apparent, much like his brother's anger in the McLaren garage earlier. He was denied a possible first win, and despite waving his cap and spraying champagne during the celebrations, he felt aggrieved. So aggrieved that he even crashed Jordan's post-race celebrations, saying that Ralph would never drive for Jordan again. If any of you were wondering, yes, he did actually follow up on that threat. Ralph would achieve oh, one dang. final podium for Jordan at Monza, before leaving the team for Williams, where he spent six years, 
Michael missed out on a third world title, losing to Hakkinen in the final race. Dang. Had he won at Spa, he would have gone into the title showdown at Suzuka with a six point lead instead of a four point deficit. In the end, oh only eight out of God. 22 cars would finish the race, with 13 out of 14 DNFing cars bowing out of the race due to some sort Insane. of collision or damage. The only man that retired on track due to a mechanical failure was Esteban Suero in the Minardi Ford. And boy, would he have been thanking his guardian angels for that. Thank God. So, not only was Spa 1998 a gift from the F1 script writers, but it also had huge implications for the Drivers' Championship. I quite doubt we will ever see a race like this again, mostly because the FIA would rather run two laps in the wet and then call the race off these days. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out the one I made about the greatest Formula 1 season of all time. Something tells me you'll like that one. That was legit insanity, dog. Legit. That race was wild. So much happening. But that's all we got. Make sure y'all subscribe. Ring notification bell. Give the video a thumbs up. So get suggested. It's your boy Dina. Out.